evening. No. Let's just <laughs> hope that this is working somewhere in the ether. Um, Tonight, uh, I think you've got you've got quality, not quantity. Brady uh, has de dis uh, uh, deserted us. He's gone on holiday with his kids, but it's Easter holiday, so that's actually fair enough. But I think we should give him a bit of a hard time over that. I didn't like <laughs> to dig out any of those photos that the paparazzi sent us of him in his budgies, so maybe we can dig one of those out for next week. However, I'm going to be on my holiday, so I will have to be, sl I am going to have to be slightly careful, be careful. how... Be careful. how how low a blow we, we we go for that. Just want to say uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, we're going to be talking about the 360 Degrees Pet Conference that we that uh, um, uh, uh, Connor Brady and uh, Brendan Clark and Anna Heim Bjorkman and I were at over the weekend, and it was great success, and um, everybody thoroughly enjoyed it. So we're going to be talking about that today, and we're going to do some questions questions and answers, and. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say thank you very much to all our Patreon people. All you need to do if you want to support us on a, you know, give us a a, 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 a wee uh, a price of a cup of coffee or a, a cup of tea or a pint of beer or whatever your poison happens to be. Uh, if you want to give us that, the equivalent of that, just once per month, we would be very, very grateful. You just go to Patreon and you look up raw pet medics and follow your nose you will um, get um, uh, certain perks being in patreon yeah. as well because we like to look after you we haven't got a lot of time to really look after you as many many uh, shows do but we do recognize you and value your input to us also th um you can get us on any podcast you like spotify and apple and all of those kind of things and what else oh we're on youtube as well if you do find us on youtube please subscribe so you can you can see all our all our shows and please do give us a like because the log uh, a logarithm the algo as the youth are calling them these days the algo likes that and they will send more people in our direction if there's lots of likes so oh, um amazing so they go. Uh, and nice to see some people. Uh, hi to uh, Rach Mack, who's made it live again. Uh, oh, was she first? Uh, yeah, Nick. Oh, no, she wasn't, but she mm -hmm. was live, so she's really pleased with that. Um, Nicola, no, he's not stranded over in Turkey. He flew back and managed to fly off on his holly bobs. So he's, as Nick says, probably currently scorching himself under the sun um and uh, uh enjoying a bit of family time so we'll allow um, that you know from that side yeah, of things we'll and don't that. forget you know uh to uh, tonight uh we are going to be talking about the 360 uh pet conference that we've just been to i think um it was great we're really going to enjoy talking about that we've also actually possibly got a little bit of time so if you've got some burning questions uh, we mm. had a great one from the conference that i think we should address tonight because we didn't really manage to address it live um on mercury in fish and what's safe but if you've got a question uh, do pop it in the comments um we might be able to scan through and see those and if it's something really interesting um, especially if you're on youtube uh, we'll be able to show that up live. So hi, Kaz, who's on YouTube. Uh, good to see you there. If you are able to get on both and you want to go over on there, then please do uh, pop over onto YouTube. We can actually see your comments a little easier. Well, Nick can see them. I can see I both. Can see comments on YouTube, guys, right, on the tube of you, but uh, uh, Brendan can see them on Facebook, the Book of Face. So, uh, you can put them up any, anywhere you fancy. Uh, I've got a few just in reserve because we always have about two dozen yeah. questions on any given Q and A. But uh, we, it's going to be fairly a fairly relaxed situation because we were working over the weekend, and um, and we're just going to do a recap. It's not too heavy this evening. It's going to be a bit more chatty. Uh, I'm just about to go on my holidays as well. We're taking the kids away on thursday so really looking forward to that it's are quite funny the last two days. Are you what are you back for tuesday next week no i'll do you pre-record i'll record oh. you 20 minutes to let you off will you know if you like if you fancy, <laughs> no. if you fancy. 
Um, or no, I'll come on. Case, depending. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you time differences and all that sort of stuff. Oh, but yeah, we'll, we'll make something happen. We'll exhausting. make something happen. Um, so just funny. so everybody knows out there, uh, we're going to be talking all about Easter and eggs next Tuesday. So Ooh. if you've got any interesting questions about eggs, uh, we're going to answer them next week. And it looks like awesome. it's going to be me and Connor. And uh, I'll, I'll, we're going to see how scorchioed he actually has been this week. <laughs> no, I'm going to have I'm going to have sunshine in the morning and sunshine in the late afternoon, and avoid the sun cream and uh, maximize my vitamin D. That's essentially what I'm going to do. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. That's the plan. That's the plan. I'm trying to avoid uh, the sun cream these days. So and, and Rach uh, is on holiday at the moment, just enjoying time with her little pooch, Macy. Uh, cool. That's, that's why she's able to watch us live. Okay, so. brilliant, Rach. Nice to have you there. Um, please do come on on uh, YouTube because uh, then I can see you. Kaz, we've got you there. Um, I'm sure yeah. you're not the only person, but uh, you're the yeah, only person indeed. I can see. So thank you for but being I'm, there, Kaz Langley. Brilliant. Tracy so, is uh, saying she's got her ticket for seeing us in Florida in October. So oh my she's God, going to be watching. So so Tracy organized. Smith, hi, how are you doing? Um, and just, you know, there we go. So da, 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 da. <laughs> that's very organized. Yeah, I'm Jane, quite impressed. Jane, I'm <laughs> sorry. I am not spending too much time in <laughs> Wales. Maybe too much time speaking to the Welsh, but not too much time in Wales. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, here we go. The egg puns are coming. So oh, <laughs> excellent. Etc. I'll tell you what, it'd be yeah. lovely to to go over to Wales, maybe set maybe mid Wales, so that everybody can come along the North Aberystwyth. Wales Brigade, maybe Aberystwyth to do a to do a yeah. RPM. From oh, where, where is we're, Aberystwyth? We're, we're, is it in Aberystwyth. the middle? It's well, it's idea. right on in the middle on the west coast, isn't it? So near I, St David's. So I think, from a point of view of being able to. Uh, do the RFVS conference. Maybe we do it at the same time and we um, have a little bit of RPM over there as well. Have an RPM day the next day after. Yeah. I'm not sure how that's going to go down, actually. If there may be, <laughs> there may we'll be, be upsetting people. There may be trouble at nil. Yeah. Hey. Um, yeah. Don't start talking about trouble that's as good as it gets, uh, mate. Um, <laughs> so, really want Tina, to say big Patricia. Hi, how are you doing on YouTube? Oh, I was going to do that. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> pa Patricia, I was just looking at, I, I was just doing a run up on how to to pronounce Gonzalez. Salves. Uh, excuse oh. my, my, my Spanish well, accent. Depends which uh, nationality it's from, I guess. Oh, did you know? Uh, I mean, somebody see... told me. Sorry, somebody told me at the, at the weekend that in, I think in, in Spain, they, they, uh, they pronounce uh, there's a there's a kind of a lisp on on uh, on the s's I think, yeah, okay, yeah. You know, um, I'm just trying to think of some words. I can't remember. And any Spanish speakers, excuse my ignorance, but apparently in South America, where they also speak Spanish, they don't. They speak. They, they say their s's uh, oh, without okay. the lisp, and apparently it's because. So the, the the Spanish went over uh, back in the bad old days and 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 um, uh, uh, established Spanish entity in South America, right? And uh -huh. then the king in Spain changed, and he had a lisp, and nobody wanted to offend him, so the entire court started speaking their s's with a bit of a lisp, and ever since then, in Spain. And all their visas they, bees. Is that what you're they, saying? They, it's, it's not visas bees. I'm not sure what that is. But with the, the lisp thing, uh, 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 Velázquez. Velázquez? That's how they say it. And it's because the king had a lisp and nobody wanted to, to uh, so upset him. Clothes. Yes. Patricia, exactly. our wonderful, so Portuguese. There you go. You've now got to work out how that's. Patricia is Spain's. in Portuguese, right? Well, so, I love Lisbon. Um, but, living in Spain. <laughs> oh, living in Spain. Okay, well, the best of all worlds. And Joey is here. Um, Joey, please do say whether you've, we've organised the time thing. I sent you, Joey, 
the um the, the whole british summer time thing with dates and times and what have you so i, I hope that's oh, clear wow. joey it's lovely to have you here thank you so much and thank you for restreaming to <clears throat> all of those people watching us on dr judy's page um you know it's essential for joey to do his job in order for that to happen uh so thank you joey and amazing uh, and greetings to all our compatriots our amigos and amigas in, in uh, the US of A. That's fantastic. Um, so, Brent, how did you find the, the conference? I was there for the first day and then I had to shoot off for the second and you guys did all your stuff on the second. Um, how was the second day? Tell me, because uh, well, uh, I, I wasn't there. Busy. I tell you what, you know, uh, let's let's face it. We did um, two sessions on the first day. You did one uh, where you were um, wonderfully speaking up front. We did the live session obviously mm. uh, as which well which mm. um you know a couple of hours it, it you know it was great to interact and um hopefully you guys watching us could cope with the translation delays uh, and that side of things so that was a learning lesson uh, maybe we'll need to edit that down and, and make it a little bit more uh concise um so if you watched us on saturday uh you're welcome there is a question to come to answer from that um was it audible uh, uh bren uh, ellie had a look and she said she couldn't hear a lot but maybe she only oh, listened well, right at the beginning or something or no yeah well that's right right at the beginning it wasn't great i think ah, uh so okay. there, there was that element so we'll we'll have a look at how that can be chopped and changed because mm, we've got mm, soundtracks mm. we've got video we've got all sorts to for us to be able to repost um on our upcoming networks and stuff mm -hmm. so uh, we'll have a look at that so second day um was great anna did a brilliant job um from dog risk on research uh really sort of laid uh the tracks uh for you know really eased things for me because all the research was then talked about and i could just go in and enjoy my bit later on on um mm. talking about cats giving uh cats a bit more relevance because did you realize just I, well i hadn't realized just how much cats probably it, out uh, uh numbers the dog population in the pet owning community so a lot of dogs on the streets a lot of dogs that are looked after by the communities out there but actually um there's a massive interest in cat uh um, medicine uh, feline medicine out there and uh so uh really received very well talking about how to bring raw and holistic health to cats um a little bit more so that was really great uh, to do that um it was a little bit of overrun i think everybody got too excited and <laughs> did more than they should uh but there we go we just ate into the last sessions of the day so uh connor went down okay uh, unfortunately he still needs to learn how to use PowerPoint and not try and put them up as PDF slides. <laughs> and uh, he'll be watching this and so going, needs oh. to learn PowerPoint. <laughs> what can we do? Well, I, we're I, getting there. I, I, I can remember. I can remember. I've still got PTSD from Connor turning up at Manchester. You remember when we did the Raw Feeding Veterinary <laughs> Society conference? Probably six of or so years ago yeah. and connor turns up and he says oh yeah here's my presentation it's on what's it what's it called open office or something yeah it's like <laughs> anything open, that's free open what open <laughs> you are joking and this is 10 to 9 and he was on at nine o'clock and i was there organizing it which is why i'm <laughs> aging at the rate i am because of this kind of trauma um and and so we had to we had to search around the room to see if anybody had a laptop that could play his thing it was absolute nightmare so we <laughs> must try and lean on connor to learn powerpoint oh i, I think this weekend's done it for him he now knows um, with um, a learning lesson that's gonna happen <laughs> there's no way so he's basically uh by the time he gets to october there is no yeah. way he's going to be let loose with anything except powerpoint so uh, totally that's done. totally <laughs> Okay. Even so if we have to strip the talk off him and convert it before his very eyes. Uh, well, I'm happy to, to go through an hour of how I use PowerPoint with him. You know, if yeah. you're, do you use PowerPoint? You, if yeah. you do the same, then that will get him off to a good start. I'd have thought. And Joey is saying, uh, we will be sure to hold his hand in October. 
Joey, yeah. you just need to lean on him and say that you will not accept anything but PowerPoint. Okay, if you can do that, even if you have to lie, do it. Yeah, yeah. I, he's probably going to watch this. He probably won't watch it actually because he'd be on holiday. Um, just give me a little resume of what you went through, Brent, with your with your cat stuff. That'd be really good. And if you right. can do a like a resume of Connor's and a resume of Anna's, that'd be great. And then I'll give a little resume of mine. Yeah. So um, I basically ripped off your talk. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> we were joking all day at your expense um and uh, there was a wonderful slide uh, that you opened with with the uh, dogs being pulled you know uh, pulling a, a lady along um and we just had a, a little bit of you know uh, actually recognition that a lot of the stuff that's talked about for dogs is just as relevant for cats and as soon yeah. as you're feeding raw the whole anxiety about uh, the um taurine levels just really is is all but becomes mute in the sense that there's going to be plenty in there unless you do something seriously wrong with your food uh we talked about variety we talked about um balance we talked about bones you know what's appropriate we talked um uh, a little bit of the main parts were very much about understanding the importance of behavior in feeding for cats so Ooh. making sure you're getting them ready with a bit of hunting exercise can be really useful for those cats that aren't just ready to go and straight away eat um to look at dawn and dusk you know so twilight feeding uh looking at the wonderful additions that you can use almost mimicking some of the process tweaks that have been made in their previous food so looking at bone broths looking at goat's milk mm. fermented goat's milk to make it creamier texture for them mm. um can be really useful additions um uh, looking at just unfortunately having to use some of the horrible flavored stuff that is actually you know effectively cat crack uh to um tempt them into eating a healthier diet it's like treating them as children because they really are you know uh, for many of us um and being able to develop them across um understanding that drive to addiction that's often out there in the processed diets mm. so we talk a lot about that talked about the risk of toxicities of adding a few you know things not thinking uh, necessarily about where those those are sourced from so being careful with the types of fish you use especially with raw um mm -hmm. the thiaminase uh looking at where that can lead vitamin b deficiencies if you're mm. going to fortify a diet if you really feel the need to do that um if you've tested uh then you know and found deficiencies how to choose something that's a great option that's actually going to be absorbed and not using artificial minerals looking at you know what foods are rich in some of those chelated minerals uh mm. some really good uh usable vitamins uh rather than analogs which just aren't absorbed very well uh by cats uh, or dogs for that matter so a lot of crossover still talked cool. a lot about omega-3s uh the importance of those the underestimation that is in a lot of diets and then the the fallacies about just that you know minimal bar that we've got for afco and and fediaf and a really interesting conversation about you know um australia fighting to try and get some sort of uh, similar standard to AFCO mm. in their country mm. and just mm. thinking well actually why are you arguing arguing so vociferously for those standards when actually they are really bad poor minimums almost uh, and not optimized to any degree um, mm. as you were saying the day before and uh, so interesting conversations so that's me. Uh, Connor Oops. was very much talking about, uh, I did go into holistic health. If you want to know more about that, then come see me at the Dog Expo in May. Uh, we'll be talking a lot more about that. I'm not going to go through it right now, um, mm -hmm. but uh, you can find that Natural Dog Expo uh, is on uh, first weekend, the bank holiday weekend in May. So hopefully see some of you there I know lots of people have already been messaging me to say I'm oh, really looking forward to seeing you so um that's great 
thank you very much. So Connors very much was about carbs, the fallacy of feeding carbs to dogs, um, and you know just the, the lack of a data there that how these companies get away with saying that it's anything uh, other than a really poor option. Um, that's out there. Um, I think from looking at uh, some of the diets that have been named out there, some of the diets that have changed over the years, so that uh, you know, Hills even came up with a whole strap line of how much better feeding high fats uh, was, especially in cancer, you know, how we should be avoiding high carb diets. And yet they've sort of very quickly changed that tune, I think, because it just undermined the whole of the rest of their uh, ranges. Um, so uh, there was a little bit of chat of, you know, why are these companies using those high carb diets? What's going on with that? Um, so great sort of exploration into a number of um, sort of dietary options that are out there. Um, you know, where do carbs uh, really come in, if at all, uh, in mm -hmm. these? And why would we not even think to consider that um, uh, an option in, in our raw ranges generally? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh then anna of course was very much looked uh, she just went into um some of the main uh references that they've done at dog risk how a lot of their um surveys have developed you know what systems they've developed their surveys on why surveys are so readily accessible talking about that wonderful she did a great slide uh, which maybe we'll share um on Patreon with regards to the summation of um, the, uh, I think it was 90,000 years of experience from the 16 and a half thousand homes, the, you know, that, that very uh, early sort of summation of those people feeding raw and the lack of mm -hmm. um, uh, problems and, and, you know, the, the fact that you're more likely to get uh, food poisoning from your kids returning from kindergarten than you were from pets being fed raw. Um, and, you know, a summation of, you know, the, the benefits of actually putting something like that out and having another second source, and in this case, mm -hmm. Nikki Kamak's, you know, similar survey come forward mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and actually find almost the same proportions. Uh, and so that's the benefits of not just doing one piece of research, but having multiple centers in different areas around the world coming up with different things and actually challenging us you know if if it is different why um is there a, a problem so you know um and if it isn't difference isn't that just great because it just repeats um, the process so hopefully uh now it looks like somebody may have lost the sound or is that just rach mac because you're on holiday in the middle of scotland yeah. in rach I think yeah. that's what's happening. Um, I'll teach you for having a holiday, Rach. Um, <laughs> it's sorry, like James still has bit... sound. Thank God. Okay, okay, so it must be you, Rach. Sorry. <laughs> uh, it sounds like you've got a bit of a cold there. Did you pick something up on the plane? Oh, friend? yes. All the planes. You, did? you know, oh, that's what it bad is. Luck. So, bad luck. Yeah, bad luck. Just, just uh, you'll be right soon. You'll be right. Um, so I just, I really just did a, 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 a resume of my two uh, vids. I've done a vid called Raw Feeding the Basics, which you can get on my website. And I've done another one called uh, Bones and How to Feed Them, again, on the website. Follow your nose, you can't miss it, holisticvet.co.uk. And I think it was, I mean, they're, they're, they're quite advanced as, as, as raw feeders and the vets over there in Turkey, possibly and probably actually more advanced than the average vet in the UK, which is yeah. absolutely fabulous. And we had a whole gaggle of vet students there as well. So uh, there were second years and third years and fourth years from Istanbul University and other universities. And so that was really heartening. And for them to get some real basics, from from me and it sounds like Brent did some, some some fairly good basic stuff with cats as well is so valuable because when I was at college we didn't really get pr any practical 
um, small animal uh, nutrition uh, lecturing whatsoever. We did get some biochemistry and some physiology and what have you and how to feed a dairy cow and what have you, but not practical this is how you feed a cat. This is how you feed a dog. So hopefully that will have inspired them. They were really keen. Uh, you came know up what was also food. really were... impressive over yeah. there was actually mm. just their embracing of mm. multimodal integrative medicine. You know, mm. not just you know, not just about their interest in nutrition and raw food feeding, and mm. you know, looking at that. And yeah. uh, there was a little bit of a debate, you know. And, you know, empowering them to think about how to look at research and utilize stuff that's not in the species they're necessarily treating, but, you know, in other species, just, just yeah. thinking that yeah. through, you yeah. know, you've got comparative anatomy, you've got comparative physiology, you've got mm. comparative biochemistry, yeah. you've spent three years of your student life learning <laughs> you're it. you know life. don't don't yeah. don't put that to waste you know it's uh it's mm. a brilliant mm. grounding for, for mm. nutrition uh, but actually them embracing homeopathy chiropractics acupuncture herbal medicine you know all of that side of things and being enthused by that um uh so we br we brought in a little bit more about you know the other um uh, thought processes and the interactions with owners and, and that mm. side to it. Um, yeah, but it's great to see how much, even the professors that were on, um, the, you know, Barno was there, of course, doing mm. holistic medicine and, um, uh, and homeopathy. And I think just, um, seeing how well they were received and how much they used those um, alongside conventional medicine uh, mm -hmm. within Turkey. So, because um, mm. the uh, Professor Suleiman, mm. who was, you know, fairly uh, eminent, uh, opened the whole show at the beginning. Mm. Um, so, the recognition, they, they're beating us, guys. The Turks, God bless them, are beating the Brits. And I think they're, they're, they've only come to the show. In the last five or ten years we've been in, we've been you know pretty keen for about 20 odd years and actually the uh, professionals are embracing it with greater open arms than they, we are in the uk maybe that's because we're a bit more conservative and i don't know yeah conservative small c conservative uh maybe the maybe the the Turkish people, they, they're, they're a bit more open-minded. Uh, yeah. Don't know, but they're certainly, you know, as a proportion of, 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 of the vets in Turkey, it seems to be there's more who are keen, which is fabulous. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So we've got a thing to learn there, guys. So let's, uh, let's, let's step up and uh, use them as, so, our, as our, our guidelines. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, simple stuff from me. Uh, the vet students really liked it, and I'm really glad to be able to offer them that. Um, we did some other stuff, uh, you know, kind of just just trying to get everybody on the same page. I was just thinking to try and get everybody on the same page. It would have been uh, too little uh, information, or no, just too simple information for for some of the people there. But hopefully, many people would would uh, gain something from that so uh and then we went to on the saturday night between the two uh, mm -hmm. days we went to the most impressive impressive um ultra modern it's only been open open five months or so called the vet american um vet hospital and i have to say it was probably one of the most impressive i've seen ever uh really yeah, yeah i think we're yeah. going to share some photos of that on patreon because uh, and okay. a little video from the uh, uh the wolf bar on the top floor um, okay. <laughs> just so that you've got a little understanding let's do that on patreon so that the guys can uh, see okay. your post on that because i think you will be yeah all of the toys i mean Very even to the point of you know owners hotel type rooms that they could stay if their pets were sick they could stay with their pets on site 12 um, hotels um, where you could stay if your dog was yeah. sick and if the dog wasn't critical 
dog would stay with you so that they could monitor the dog and what have you. And it was really nice room, better than some of the hotels rooms <laughs> I've been staying in over the last <laughs> three years. That's for sure. So super impressive. Uh, and yeah, and we've so got to say thank you publicly to Naz and Etchard for just being, you know, such great hosts and, and looking after us and, you know, actually inviting us over and sponsoring us to, to go and deliver those talks. You know, thank you so much um, uh, over there. Yeah, so. absolutely brilliant. So um, some questions. Should we have a look at some questions? I'm not sure if any, none have come up on YouTube. But that's okay. Uh, no, yeah, As and none have. Tina, uh, yeah, Patricia, think... I'll forgive you. Hugo the Frenchie, <laughs> I'll forgive you. Um, well, I think uh, Tina, it, was it Tina? I think Tina asked um, on maybe a different Tina uh, mm. on the Saturday when we were doing the live about. Oh. So let's kick off with the discussion oh, over mercury. using mercury or heavy metal contamination in yeah. fish. Yeah. So um what do you feel you know what's okay. your interpretation of fish if being used what would you allow your pets to eat and what would you be sort of seriously frowning at in terms of just in terms of mercury not in terms of thiamonases or, no no uh or, i would say mercury. okay just for no, mercury. i would say uh in risk of pollution let's say that because there's yeah. more than just Pollution. mercury, isn't there? Okay, I think that is a really sticky wicket. And oh, right. Oh, remember, okay. I do, yeah, I do, because, you, you know, how can you, you know, when you've got a fish lying on the slab in the fishmongers, how can you tell what the mercury level is within that piece of fish? So However, can, what yeah. you can uh, so uh, the other thing was that we did have a presentation, remember, in, in Helsinki, somebody done a lot of work on it, and, and there were certain species which were, markedly higher and i think i think was it trout there was trout and 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 what have you but i can't remember i could look it up but i can't remember right now but what you can do is you can go online and you can say the this is a table of mercury in fish from the atlantic or this is a table of it because it's different of 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 mercury in fish from the pacific or from wherever it might be the north sea and you can say right this this and this is going to be tend to be higher in mercury and this this and this are going to be tend to be lower in mercury and i actually would be guided by something like that if you're not feeding loads of fish all the time you can uh, you can you can probably get away with not looking at those kind of tables but for the sake of four minutes of looking at a table because you know that that john the fishmonger down the road gets all his fish from whitby which is fished in the north sea for example you just say right north sea what are goodies what are baddies with regard to mercury and you stick with the goodies and don't for you the dog the family don't touch the baddies and what's your and take do you know then? what so there's two two aspects to this uh what is a safe limit and i think the thing to remember is there's certain metals which accumulate in fat so it doesn't yeah. matter you know how much it is it's about the accumulation you know it could yeah. be nanograms worth it could be micrograms worth it could be milligrams worth okay. yeah but how does the average um, per person they don't know what, they don't what's know, significant. But it's so, so there's, the first thing is to, to recognize there's accumulation in some of these. And yeah. you know, once the accumulation gets to a point, toxicity can start to develop. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. as Nick says, really hard for you to work that out fish by fish basis. However, the second point for me, which came from that study, was actually mm. not that you necessarily need to think about the individual fish on the slab but more where did it come from and there was some really good stuff that actually comes back to why we choose the fish oils that we choose that may yeah. be mid-atlantic sardine and anchovy okay versus you know having a bottom feeder of mackerel um mm -hmm. that's you know on a coastline and actually 
one of those cases that really was an eyebrow raiser for me was literally um, looking at North Cornish coastal mackerel being high in lead, um, you know, which obviously sort of actually, well, yeah, they've got lead mines, you know, the yeah, rivers yeah. will yeah. flow out. You know, if you've got mackerel feeding from effluent that's coming out and that's also contaminated, you know, groundwater with, mm -hmm. you know, then they're mining lead in that area for a reason um, uh, because it's rich. And what else is going to pass through those rocks which are lead rich? It's going to be things like, yeah, the water flow and, and therefore you're going to get that risk. So, mm. It was really interesting to to think a little bit outside the box. You know, if you've got a salmon farm that's stuck right at the face of an estuary to a river that has industrial cities upstream, okay, think, you know, is that going to be sensible? In fact, actually, talking of farmed fish, you know, if you've got farmed fish and they're moving those farms around all the time because they're mm. wrecking the seabed below them with you know stuff they're sticking on the fish to keep the lice away is that going to be your optimum fish that you want to feed raw to your dog you know especially the fats from that fish which often accumulate those medicines um so i think that's what i would say mm. you know quest the fishmonger will usually say where that fish is from yeah you know totally uh, they will know from when they bought it where those trawlers have been out to um yeah because you know, that's the sort of thing they're interested in too of course it is they know. will know absolutely probably sometimes they'll know the fishermen and yeah. the other thing i was going to say uh but i've just been reading another question so and it's gone completely out of my head because i'm onto the next question in my head um what was i going to say uh oh uh avoid farmed fish Okay, because they're likely to be higher in, um, in, in not necessarily heavy metals, but they're likely to be higher in everything else. They use molluscicides, they use fungicides, they use, uh, you know, all sorts of, of, of chemicals because the fish are stressed and stressed animals, as with land animals. If they, you've got a stressed animal, you're going to you're going to be much more prone to disease. And if you if you if you've got that disease, then you have to use antibiotics and other chemicals to get them through to uh to 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 uh kill weight so um yeah avoid farmed fish i think is quite an easy win yeah. joey has put through a a question if, if are we are you uh, done on the one very level? last thing for tracy yeah. uh look you've got less control in america you're saying about where that fish is from but actually yeah you know, look at the sprats look at the white bait you know things like that not aren't necessarily gonna be you know anywhere except out in the ocean okay they're not going to necessarily be coastal they're not necessarily going to be um in rivers or anything along those lines so you've got options there to choose some really great um fish so joey yeah you know what i think we should answer that because i think for joey i i know what i would say i'd be really interested to see what you would say actually nick yeah um well i think it's a massive question but just in the last few minutes let's do that and then we'll just do one or two quickies um over for the patreons yeah yeah okay yeah yeah go on then so um let me just share this uh so joey's put up um you know what should the ratio of calcium phosphorus be for cats on raw cats food on. diet and i think actually it should be the same for dogs i okay? agree um yeah. yeah from that side of things both you know, uh, looking at that side for carnivores. Um, look, let's let's look at realistically what are the ratios in blood. Okay, uh, that's a really easy way. So we would often mm. reflect that the ratio within the bloodstream of um, solubilized calcium and phosphorus are going to be a two parts calcium to one part phosphorus um, would be a normal ratio that I would accept quite happily in any food. And there is actually, um, they don't want you going below a one to one ratio according to AFCO and FEDIAF. Um, you know, they, they actually prefer it to be, I think it's one to 1 1.2 
are about one point two calcium to phosphorus mm. one point two to one. Yeah, uh, is is the AFCO recommendation, which is predicated yeah. on uh, ultra processed food, but I think yeah. it's a good starting point. So it's about one point two to one. So this is calcium yeah. to phosphorus, one point two of the calcium to one of the phosphorus, yeah. and, but and you can push the calcium up a wee bit. So yeah. I think that's a better place to start. The thing is, even if you get an analysis on the side of the bag. That was an analysis on a batch from possibly six months ago. Okay, so a different season. You're going to have maybe different mineral con mineral content. Um, the, you, Not necessarily come out of the bag either. <laughs> and and your ability to digest that calcium and the phosphorus is going to be different from the the, the or the, your dog is going to be. If you've got two dogs, they're going to have a different ability to 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 digest those two things because of microbiome and and parathyroid and vitamin d and and all those kind of things so i think that really it's uh, as long as you don't get it too wrong that and you're feeding a, a, a reasonably well balanced uh in terms of the proteins and the and the fats then and some uh veggies notice i don't say carbs i'm going to say veggies then uh and you're getting some 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 um some seaweeds and some omega-3s in there and you're, you're having a nice nice range of 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 foods and variety is the absolute key there i think it's going to be difficult to go wrong uh with yeah. the calcium phosphorus ratio with inverted medicine it's one of the the few ratios that everybody remembers because you are drilled with it at, at at, at college but whether it pertains to a really close inquiry of real food versus ultra processed food i'm not sure and i think you know just in case this relates to people worried about uh, phosphate binding for cats with kidney disease you know again you know look at what source of that is uh is there is it is bone material which is one thing totally different okay um or is it as mineral content so there's yeah. a lot of hidden calcium going in as effectively a carrier for um mineral mixes being added to food as balancers okay mm. and, and you're in that scenario of here we go i've now got to deal with limestone calcium carbonate being in the the product um you know forcing up calcium levels and then them adding inorganic phosphates which you know both of which will be absorbed abnormally uh, from the gut compared minimum yeah minimally, minimally. The bone, you know uh yeah. so you know let's let's consider that very carefully that um you know there is a great study that uh, i remember pete colshaw you know, sharing with us um, about the relative absorption of phosphorus from bone compared to um, the um, phosphorus salts. Yeah, phosphorus salts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's completely yeah. different. But the, the the natural product is it has a much smoother absorption uh, profile, whereas the unnatural one, surprisingly, guys, goes gives you a big peak and then drops you the other side. That's yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think. I think uh, we as a society have been kind of uh, going down a, a fairly artificial route for 100 years or so. And I think we are just entering a new era of natural nutrition and the relationship of, of, of us, our dogs or cats, to that food with the microbiome in the middle of that. So I think it's it's a very interesting time to be starting a, a nutrition journey. And um, uh, there's more unknowns than there are knowns. So just get the basics, oh, the go. macros. I thought you were going right. to start doing the knowns and the unknown knowns. No, and the known no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to go there. Um, but yeah, I'd say think like your grandmother in terms of these things. Um, keep up with the variety keep it as fresh and natural as possible don't just feed your cat liver for years years on end because that ain't a raw food diet it's raw but it's not a raw food diet yeah it's about variety it's 
cats are mousevores, dogs are mousevores, rativores, deerivores, rabbitivores. That's what they're meant to eat. And the closer we can get to to that kind of food, then I think the better. Right, um, Bren. Yeah, um, let's go over let's to a bit over of into time. Patreon and see if we can do a few yep. quick quick fire um, uh, questions there. Just big thank you to all our Patreon supporters. Thanks for everybody joining us on on Facebook as well. Our podcast people, thank you, thank you. And thank you, Joey, for managing us over on Dr. Judy's side. So uh, yeah, that's good great. Man. He's a good man. Yeah, good man. Well done. So, and with um, that, yeah. guys, we're out. I'm going to be on my jollies. And um, is Connor going to be back for next Tuesday? Or is it going yep. to be you, yep. Nigga Solo? No, no. no. what egg yolk? Uh, no, no. So <laughs> <laughs> I literally, it will be us all about eggs. We're going to be. Oh, they're going to be eggs. All right. I'll, excellently. Excellent. Explicit on. Um, I think we're going to be comparing and contrasting all the different eggs that are available on the market, why you might choose one over the other, all the different components within eggs, Abidin, everything that B12. you can feed from the outer shell, membranes, whites, all the way through to the yolks, what to enhance, what to avoid, what to consider in farming and sustainability and oh we're just oh we're gonna be talking for days on eggs. You will. You will. It's one of the perfect foods, isn't it? An egg. It is. It uh, is. Yeah it's got the fats, it's got so the there meats, we go. a bit a bit a bit of everything. Uh so absolutely brilliant. Right. So that's uh, you're gonna be doing that and I'm just gonna be <laughs> jumping in uh I'll, I'll do a short one because you're going to have your work cut out with all that eggy, that excellent material that you're going to be, uh, you're going to be presenting. But I'll, I'll do a little ten minute uh, to say hello about something or other. I would, I don't think I'll talk about eggs because you're going to be doing that to death. So, uh, yeah. guys, that's us. We're going to jump over to Patreon and we'll do some quick fire questions to entertain and delight our Patreon brigade. Take care, everyone. See you have later. Have a good Easter. See ya.